scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. Matthew 11, 25 through 30. Matthew 11, beginning at the 25th verse. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed unto them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Thus endeth the reading of God's holy word. May he bless his truth into our hearts. And let us pray. Father God, as we come to you on this holiday weekend, remembering the independence that we celebrated over 200 years ago. And Father, we thank you that we are independent. We thank thee, our Father, for the heritage that we have, the things that we have learned, and the things that we enjoy from being an independent nation. Father, we ask your blessing upon this nation. Help us, our Father, as we strive to turn this back, this nation back to one nation under God. We pray, our Father, for our government for our officials, for our elected officials. We pray, our Father, that those elected will be followers of you. We thank you, our Father, for being our Father and dear to us. We thank you for our forefathers as they have brought down the message from generation to generation to generation. And we pray, our Father, that we will keep on the tradition how hand down the tradition to those that follow us. Father, we thank thee that you are our Father, that you're only a prayer away. We thank thee that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son that he should die for us. Father, we thank thee for this opportunity that we have to come into your house and to worship thee openly. And we pray, our Father, that our country will always remain open and Christian. Father, we ask you to be with our military, especially those in harm's way. Keep them safe, keep them strong, that they will be able to protect us and keep us free, that we will be able to worship you openly as we are today. We pray, our Father, for each of our members here, and we pray our Father especially for those who would like to have been here, but not able. We pray for those that have spatial needs. Father, we pray for Rose Herman. We just ask our Father you would be with her and lift her up. We pray that you would continue to be with Lily and watch over her. We thank you, our Father, that Eleanor got home. We pray that you will continue to bless and lift her up. We pray, our Father, for Mitzi, and we just ask that your healing hand be upon her. Father, we pray for Sharon Utter and, and her daughter and all Crystal, and we just ask our Father that you will be with those and bless them and care for them. Father, we, we just pray that you will watch over us, keep this nation going, and keep us going. Help us to stand up strong. Help us to stand up against the evil one when it is so much easier to be with the crowd and with the devil. We pray, our Father, that we will have the gumption, the energy, to stand apart from the 
sinful crowd and stand up for you, for your heavenly kingdom. Be with us now, our Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to thee, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. There's a wonderful legend concerning the quiet years of Jesus, the years prior to his ministry. The legend claims that Jesus the carpenter was one of the master yoke makers in the city of Nazareth and in that area. People came from miles around for a yoke, hand carved and crafted by Jesus, the son of Joseph. When customers arrived with their team of oxen, Jesus would spend considerable time measuring the team, their height, their weight, width, the space between them, the size of their shoulders, and within a week, the team would be brought back and he would carefully place this new yoke on their shoulders, watching out for the rough places smoothing out the edges and fitting them perfectly to this particular yoke of oxen. That's the yoke that Jesus invites us to take. Do not be misled by the word easy, for a true word in Greek speaks directly to the tailor-made yokes. They were well fitting. The yoke that Jesus invites us to the yoke that brings rest to the weary souls is one that is made exactly to our lives and our hearts. The yoke he invites us to wear fits us well, does not rub, does not rub us, does not cause us to develop sores, and is designed for two. His yokes were always designed for two. And our yoke partner is none other than Jesus Christ. Running throughout all scripture from the beginning to the end is the theme that ours is a burden-bearing Christ. He is not just a Lord whom we burden, and we do, but a Lord who actually solicits our burdens. I want to think with you this morning concerning that thought. He who would be effective must first be free from his burdens. First, I would suggest to you that ours is a burden-bearing Christ who sets us free from the burden of sin, but only after we have seen how much our sin burdens him. James Laney, former president of Emory University, tells of an experience that he ex uh, that occurred to him when he was four years old that brought just this truth to him. Jim Laney had an aunt who was stricken with polio at a very young age, so much that she could only walk with a pair of crutches. One day, she came to visit their home, and four-year-old Jim was out in the garden tramping on flowers, something which she had been told specifically not to do. His aunt was sitting on the front porch and very gently called out to him, Jimmy, he quickly looked up and found himself caught, like Adam in the Garden of Eden. He was trying to find a bush to hide behind, and then, lashing out in a kind of uncontrolled rebellion that all too often crops up later in life as well, he jumped up and down and defiantly shouted, It's none of your business, you old cripple! He then ran behind the house, free, or so he thought, 
from the accusing stare of his aunt. He later walked quietly into the house, past the door of the room in which his aunt was staying. As he walked by, he peeked in and saw her laying across the bed, crying, cut and stung by the thoughtless words of a little boy. Totally unprepared by what he saw, he was drawn to her by some strange, unexplained grace. He walked over to her, and she threw her arms around him and embraced him. Jimmy's little rebellious heart testifies to the rebellion and indifference of all of God's children. My friends, we are all blinded to sin. None of us are guiltless. And for those who claim that they can see, then one day you will be held responsible for what it is that you say you can see. There is not one of us here this morning who does not need to plead mercy before Christ for the great burden that we have placed upon him. It is our sin, ours, that placed him on the cross. Had he not suffered for us, we would not function, for we would be overwhelmed with guilt. But listen afresh to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But not only does Christ relieve us from the burden of sin, he relieves us from the burden of self-righteousness. How hard it is to accept the discipline that Christ would place upon us. John Wesley called us not only to a life of justification, but also to a life of holiness, or sanctification as we call it. And we have been laboring under it ever since. It is an overpowering burden that is, unless we shift it to Christ, He alone can bear the load of holiness. How many ministers have I known, including myself, who undertook the joyous burden of ministry years ago, only to discover the awesome burden of keeping ourselves fit in study and education and prayer, resisting the kind of temptations that come from a lax ministry or self-indulgence. All are not called to the ordained ministry, but all are called to ministry. There are disciplines that go along with that. All of us are under the burden of righteousness. Ask Paul, ask Martin Luther, ask John Wesley. All in their own way attempted a life of righteousness and it almost brought them to their knees in despair. We give up in our own way, we say. Lord, we have been going to church for so long we have been praying so hard, and there seems so little answer. Just let us rest and leave us alone. This Christian life can be a burden. Let me tell you a story. During World War II, there was a man in a small town who had volunteered to be a salesman for war bonds. It was a thankless job. He had to go around to his friends and ask them to buy more bonds than they already had. One day, he was at his desk eating lunch when he received a fatal telegram from Western Union. The news was what he feared the most. His son was missing in action. The moment that he had 
fretted for so long was now upon him. He went home and broke the news to his wife, and they cried a little, and then they prayed, and they prayed. Dawn had an appointment that afternoon to talk to someone about buying war bonds. Despite his personal depression, he decided to keep the appointment. He went at three o'clock to the office of a rather prominent and wealthy man in his community, a man named Bill. And he said to him, I will get right to the point. You are a man of some means. You could be doing more, and I hope that you will do more. Then came back a really abrupt reply. Now listen, don't ask to do more than I'm already doing. I'm doing all that I can, and I'm weary. I will continue at my present level, but I will do more, no more. Don't ask me to do more. So John said, well, if that's your final answer, and Bill said, it is. So he left his office. That evening, the news came out in the newspaper about John's son was missing in action. The recollection of the afternoon's conversation echoed in Bill's mind. I am doing all that I can do. How can you ask me to do more? I'm doing all that I'm doing. The words swirled around in his mind. That night, he wrote a message to John. It read, Sometimes each one of us is a fool and is selfish. Today, I was both. I had no idea of the burden of which you labored this afternoon. Whatever is needed, you can count on me. All of us feel the burden of righteousness, and from time to time we say, Lord, I cannot take another step. And we cannot unless we go to God in prayer and ask Him to remove from us the burden of self-righteousness. When times are hard, we are called upon to do hard things. Yet we need to be more like this man and realize to whom it is that we are speaking when we declare that we are doing all that we can do and are going to do. We are speaking to our Heavenly Father who gave His only begotten Son to die on Calvary's cross for us. You see, we might be relieved from the burden of sin but we are not relieved from the burden of the cross. Jesus does not take the yoke upon himself. Rather, he shares the burden with us. And he promises us the yoke will be easy around our shoulders and the burden will be light. That brings us to the third point. Christ relieves us from the burdens of sin and righteousness so that we can then be free to do real work that he has called us to do. And that is bearing the burden of someone else. All the Old Testament from the Mosaic Law to the prophets is filled with one word, and that one word is love. You are to love one another as Christ has loved you. I remember an old story about a little boy who was going out to help his dad with the yard work. Dad asked him to pick up rocks in a certain area of the yard. Dad looked over and saw the little boy struggling and pulling on a big rock that was buried in the dirt. The little boy struggled and he struggled and he struggled while Dad watched. Finally, the boy gave up and said, I just can't do it. Dad said, did you use all your strength? And the little boy looked hurt and said, yes, sir, I used every ounce of strength I have. The father smiled and said, no, you didn't. You didn't ask me to help. And the 
father walked over and the two of them together pulled that big rock out of the dirt. There are great and good works to be done at home, at work, and in the world. It may seem impossible that you have been chosen to reform them, but yoke yourself with Jesus Christ and the two of you will do them and even more. But strangely enough, there are those who criticize those who attempt to bear the burden of others. They say that the church is not called upon to do this work, or they say it is not necessary for salvation. They say that this work, this mission of the church is to shift the burden of sin onto Christ, and that is all. But I agree with James. Faith without works is dead. The two are related, and as far as I'm concerned, inseparable. We cannot simply have faith, and we cannot simply do works. We have a mission beyond the doors of the church, and we must do both. I wonder if we're willing to pray hard enough and long enough that the church may be a place where not only the burdens of sin and righteousness are loosened, but where Christ's people are called in love to bear the burdens of others. I am convinced that you are willing. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your Son who came and lived and died for us. Father, we just pray that each of us here today are willing to take up the yoke with Jesus. He promises the burden of his life. Help us, our Father, to remember who is in charge of this universe, who is in control of it, that you are. We thank you, our Father, that you help us through situations where we could not do through ourselves. Thank you, our Father, that when we stumble and fall, that you lift us up and put us back on the line. Help us, our Father, to always remember that. Father, we thank you for your Son and all that he's done for us day in and day out. We pray, our Father, that each of us will take up our gift. Go to Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may be able to do more in his name. And for his sake, we ask that you bless us, our Father, in that church. In Christ's holy name, I pray. Amen.